Can we talk about how crippling perfectionism is? Perfectionism is literally crippling because it makes you not want to do anything that isn't like perfectly set up and you know is going to go perfectly to plan. But as we all know, it don't go to plan. Alrighty, cookies. We are back for another episode, another location change because I changed countries. I am in Japan, just doing a little bit of traveling while I'm here in Asia. And y'all, food has been amazing. Literally the first night I was here, you were just like walking around trying to figure out what to eat. And we stopped into a place and they're like, oh, cash only, only spoke Japanese. And I'm like, okay, next place. Oh, cash only. Only spoke Japanese. Oh, next place. Oh, you need a reservation. And then we finally got to a place and I literally saw a card reader and I was like, okay, I think we're in the clear. We sit down at the bar and literally order these chicken wings. And I'm like, huh, you know that scene in Ratatouille? where the fireworks go off and he's eating the the cheese and the strawberry and you're just like wow it i felt like that it was just like soy saucy and a little sweet but it had like salt and pepper and it was like nice and crispy and warm i had to do a second a second round and so the food the food scene has been crazy um obviously we got the vivian westwood red label over here so yeah, it's just been like a little scavenger hunt throughout the city. But today we are talking about golden child syndrome. Now let's define it. Golden child syndrome, according to the interwebs, is a term typically used by families to refer to a child that is regarded as exceptional in some way. The golden child is expected to be extraordinary at everything not make mistakes, and essentially be perfect. Golden children are actually usually driven to be perfect in everything they do, and it can manifest in obsessive attention to detail and a relentless pursuit of excellence. Now, y'all know me. Y'all know me at, at this point, right? And I think that this is me to a T, and I finally have a name for it, Golden Child Syndrome. But genuinely... I think that growing up, right, my parents obviously loved me, obviously wanted the best for me, and that's that's what all, like, good parents would do, right? You love your child, and you just see them as this perfect little thing that can make no mistakes because, they, like, they are you, right? And... I think that growing up, it was a lot of maybe just pressure that I felt. And it's funny because, yeah, my parents, like, pressured me to do well in school, let's say. But it wasn't for my entire life. I feel like the pressure was definitely at the beginning. Like, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Because I remember taking the gate test, the gifted and talented education test right i specifically remember i don't think that every child took it at my school this was like back when i lived in norcal not every child took it at my school but it was definitely <laughs> it was definitely something that like you were chosen for and like back in the day your girl used to be real academic and i i think i am still academic um like i i I'm still knowledgeable about things. I love to learn and all of that, but I was I was a I was a library bunny. I don't I don't even know like what those are called. But like I lived in the library and I just like loved learning and school and all of that and I took this test. And I remember telling my parents, I like, came back and they're like, "Oh, how was it?" And I was literally like, "Oh, that was so easy." Like literally you just match the pictures and the words and then they're like, "Wow, you were a genius." It's like pattern recognition, like I got into the program, I went to this special school every week, like we did like a science experiments and it just felt like natural and easy. And so from a very early age, I was like, "Oh, I'm like good at school." And I think that like like I said, my parents put that pressure on me like early, but once I got into that program, it really felt like a lot of the praise 
from my parents came from my academic accomplishments and so I think that like obviously as a kid you just want to please your parents right like as a kid that their affirmation is everything to you and so that's what I wanted was the love and affirmation that being good at school gave me and so I just continued on that road and I remember there were times in like fourth grade or so where my mom would be like you should sleep or like you should go hang out with your friends like go to the birthday party and do all the things but like oftentimes I chose to skip birthday parties and hangouts because I just wanted to study and I actually don't think it was like a want to study but I think like I was just highly sensitive and needed to please my parents and so I think that it just created this syndrome I guess where I felt like I had to be perfect and I don't fault my parents at all for this because I truly genuinely know that my parents love me and they want the best for me and this is their this was like just how they thought was the best way to raise me was by telling me that like I was perfect but I wasn't in reality and so I felt like I couldn't make any mistakes and so right like let's look into the symptoms what are the symptoms of a golden child heightened expectations and praise can often lead to significant psychological stress and emotional trauma such as anxiety depression perfectionism perfectionism see like i couldn't mess up there back in the day perfectionism and relational difficulties now was i an anxious person yes am i still an anxious person highly am i trying to work on it absolutely because being anxious is not fun being anxious is not productive and it just like does not make me feel good and so i'm really fighting and trying my best to have healthy coping mechanisms to the anxiety now how did i do this i i think that therapy was a huge thing for me obviously like it is up to you whether or not you believe in therapy because I think that like therapy only works if you truly believe in it. If you believe in the therapy, it depends on the therapist and your relationship and how you work. But I think that learning about my brain and how it works when I am anxious was completely, completely validating. It just made me feel like, oh, I can do this. There are solutions to this. And so literally simple things like looking around the room and naming the color of items like literally right around this room I see white brown blue orange red yellow blue green it gets your mind to focus on the present and kind of like just calm because you know your colors okay if you're colorblind let's just name the item even like simple things like counting like we have counted our entire lives and so I'm very used to how to count and so I think that helps a lot I also think that identifying exactly what my anxiety triggers are like when I get elevated and realizing that I am not my anxiety and the anxiety is just like a symptom of like how I'm feeling it's just your body's natural response right and so two specific situations i'm like okay i know i get highly anxious when i leave things to the last minute and so let's try our best to not do that i know i get highly anxious when like my space is not in order and so i revert to cleaning up and i get highly anxious when i'm not exercising or walking enough just like physical activity And so I think recognizing all of those things is very important and just like taking a deep breath, right? And like even when I go into like highly stressful situations, I mentally prepare myself, right? Like I wouldn't say I'm super socially anxious, but oftentimes like, yeah, I'm thinking about how I'm coming across in a situation. And so right before my safe space I will sit in the car and I will just take a second for myself be like you can do this just be yourself because I think that not being authentically myself is anxiety inducing they can like me hate me and we leave it at that because you get what you get and so I think that that was a huge help 
Um, next on the list of symptoms, depression. The podcast started when I was highly depressed. Um, I am absolutely 90% an extrovert. And so when in COVID, we couldn't meet each other and we had to quarantine and stay isolated in our homes and like literally the only person I was seeing was Julie I was the most down I have ever been in my entire life and it was really hard because I felt like I was fighting with my family every single day and like I was alone in this world and I didn't have purpose and I didn't really understand like what my life meant and what I like why like why was I here like what is the point of it all because if I couldn't be perfect then what was the point right but I think the point is that you're not perfect nobody is perfect right like I am very guilty of like when I like meet a partner I think that they're perfect I literally think that like or like right when I'm going on these dates I'm like oh my god you're perfect and I kind of like place them on a pedestal in some way But as you slowly get to learn about people, you start to realize, like, you know what? Your imperfections are kind of cute and beautiful and quirky. And, like, that's what makes you you. Like, I don't want to live in a world where it's like that SpongeBob episode where everything is, like, perfect and square and routine and just, like, so, like, it's, it's, it's normal, right? I hate that. When people are a little bit too normal, I'm like, what? Like, what is going on? Like, you don't have any quirks or, like, opinions or, like, disagreements. Like, I don't, I, my brain can't fathom that. And so, actually, yeah, in reality, I look at it now and I'm like, the quirks of people and the mistakes and the imperfection of people are what make them so special because otherwise, like, dude, it's so boring like and boring is okay too if that is your quirk if your quirk is that you were boring dude just revel in it just revel in it because i actually love that and okay next perfectionism yeah golden child syndrome yeah i think i could infer from the name that perfectionism is absolutely a symptom of it but can we talk about how crippling perfectionism is perfectionism is literally crippling because it makes you not want to do anything that isn't like perfectly set up and you know is going to go perfectly to plan but as we all know things happen when we're traveling things happen in our lives things happen in our familial relationships and personal relationships that they don't go to plan honestly i think that like going through our 20s and like literally living our lives has just been problem solving after problem solving after problem solving just like literally like oh we got a fire to put out here and we got a fire to put out here oh i made a mistake on this like we got to fix that and so if you are struggling with perfectionism it makes it so that like I can't focus on anything except for the fact that, like, I have a billion things to do, but, like, I don't know which one to start with, and I don't know, like, like, if I want to do the laundry, that means that I should go work out in the morning, and that means that, like, oh, I probably should wash my hair afterwards, and so it's just, like, it's just the mental load is like so exhausting but i'm like really i'm like okay it doesn't matter if i wash my hair three or four times in a week it's okay if i mess up my hair schedule because you know what like if i need to do the laundry i should just do the laundry and we could do it again right like i think that like it's easy to get into this like scarcity mentality of like oh i can only i should only do laundry once a week but like is it going to detrimentally like ruin everything if I have to do it like one and a half times a week I don't think so and so I think that like the abundance mindset even impacts like small things like that where it's like oh there is a solution like the things can be fixed and adjusted and like that that's okay that's how life works and so if you are struggling with golden child syndrome once again I think therapy was great for me I really think that it helped a lot just to have a professional who knows what they're doing and has dealt with like maybe clients like you 
to just talk you to through the things because okay right like when you look for a therapist i actually like when they tell me what types of like populations or what types of like things that they specialize in right because that means that they dealt with it a lot and that means that they have examples of like kind of like assisting in your healing process so I actually really love that I also I know that I'm very privileged in this but I was able to talk to my parents about this and be like oh you know I'm not perfect like I'm not perfect I'm not a perfect human being and oftentimes you'll start to realize that that wasn't the expectation for you in the first place that's just what you think your parents expectations for you are because your parents make mistakes your parents are human your parents have lived more life than you and so being able to talk to them I think was a huge 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 blessing and I will never take that for granted because being able to openly communicate with them about how I felt about how I was raised was like so beautiful to me and then within yourself you need to practice being imperfect I know that sounds weird like how do you practice like being imperfect because like obviously you want to do everything like well and such but do something that you're not perfect at whether that is like making something like jewelry or pottery that like you could do everything right technically and like your plate will get destroyed in the kiln is it kiln 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 i think it's kiln like i think that that is beautiful right because it allows you to realize that you can't hold on so tightly to everything it's also not that serious and like you could do everything right and it could just not work out because maybe it wasn't meant to work out right i also think that like when things don't work out accepting that like that's just the fate of it and like that's just the universe being like yeah that's just what it's supposed to be like you are not meant to have this thing you go with it and so I guess this is just encouragement if you think that you are somebody who deals with or dealt with golden child syndrome to not feel the pressure to fill in the blanks and be this perfect little Tiffany box that you think everyone needs you to be because at the end of the day like I think that it would be so sad to look at your life and be like I don't think that I was myself and I don't think I lived authentically as myself for my entire life and so let's not look at our lives with regret in the future right like let's think about who we want to be in this world who we think we are already inside and live authentically as ourselves because I honestly think that's what everyone around you wants for you is for you to feel confident and comfortable in yourself to the extent that you're able to actually be yourself also don't be so hard on yourself not everything is your fault a lot of things are just shared blame or just the circumstances and so just don't be so hard on yourself like okay like truly like speaking to you very earnestly don't be hard on yourself like you be kind to yourself because There are things that happen that are out of your control. There are things that happen that, like, you couldn't have predicted. And it's important that you forgive yourself for all the things that you think you did wrong. And yeah, I think we will leave it at that note. But thank you guys so much for joining me in Japan. Um, Yeah, we went to Don Quixote and I got these um, Ohiro, Orihiro cognac jelly things. And they're very good. They have some that are zero calorie, some that are not um but yeah it's literally like uh three o'clock and i'm so starving and so i'm gonna go eat something and i